Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, just <clears throat> want to get with you real quick. Uh, I'm going to be covering eight on our Zoom meeting today at one o'clock. Uh, but I'm going to go with chapter nine right now on hand tools. Basically, you know, we're going to look at as far as the technician goes, we need to look at getting some pretty good quality tools. So that way, when we go and out there in the job placement here, we're going to be able to find out that, um, you know, without tools, you really can't work. And it takes a while to get these tools lined up. Um, you want to get a pretty good basic quality of tools. Uh, you know, Harbor Freight's got some pretty decent tools, but, uh, you know, I kind of lean more towards Craftsman right now. Since there's uh, Sears went out of business, uh, they've been, of course, uh, the wholesalers for uh, Craftsman tools. Uh, now you can get them over there at, at Lowe's and I believe Home Depot. Uh, they have a pretty good selection of tools over there that you can buy. Uh, for craftsmen <clears throat> so uh, that would probably be the best way to go uh, trying to get started especially on a startup kit you want to try and get some tools uh, necessary for for being able to do uh, some work out in the field and so you know we're going to be looking at different sockets you know the drives the quarter inch the three eighths the half inch which is a pretty much prevalent that we use six point 12 point sockets uh, that they have out there. Of course, six points are probably the best ones to get because they don't slip off the, the uh, a nut or a bolt head, which can consequently strip the uh, the head of bolt assembly. So that can cause problems with uh, the bolt coming out. Uh, so we're looking at wrenches too. I'm on chapter nine today. <clears throat> I'm gonna do uh, uh, eight in our Zoom meeting today and then nine is gonna be uh, another chapter we'll cover so we can kind of knock that out. Um, so we're looking at wrenches, you know, open end wrench, box end wrench, or a combination wrench where you've got on page 69, uh, you've got an open end on one end and then a box end on the other, which typically, you know, you use the open end uh, only like to uh, aid in, in, in tightening after you've broken the nut or bolt with the box end. And then uh, of course you can finish off and make it quickly to take it off on the open end. Same thing for uh, installing the fastener with a nut or a bolt you know you're typically able to go ahead and everything as far as bolts and nuts get started hand first never use a tool to help start a nut and bolt into a thread because that's the quickest way to wind up stripping the internal threads <clears throat> so always start every nut and bolt every uh, line especially when we get into lines uh, like brake lines transmission lines uh, uh, refrigeration lines, some of them have, are threaded, uh, power steering lines. Uh, those have to be initiated with uh, two hands first. Get a couple of threads, two or three threads started, and then the rest you can wrench them in. Uh, we have uh, combination wrenches or adjustable wrenches. Uh, those help out in, in case we want to hurry up and get uh, something tightened up and uh, we don't want to go get the appropriate wrench for it. We can use a crescent wrench. In some instances on bigger nuts, uh, we need a crescent wrench. And some places that uh, are hard and difficult to get to, uh, we could use a, a, uh, a combination wrench or adjustable wrench to help us out with that. Uh, line wrenches are key and critical. On um, page 69, on uh, figure 9-7, uh, you'll see that there. Uh, those are precise type of wrenches. They're measured correctly all the way around. Of course, they come in standard and metric sizes. And what those are uh, able to do for us is especially on brake lines, which we use them a lot, uh, transmission cooler lines, uh, some uh, AC lines, very small ones, not so big uh, of AC lines, but mainly on the brake lines, uh, we need to have line wrenches. Power steering hoses, uh, rack and pinion, uh, type of uh, lines that go to the bottom here. Uh, we do have those available. Uh, the other type of kind of sort of line wrench, we call them, but they're not, and there's a 3H drive at the end of the head of it are called crow's foot. And a crow's foot basically, uh, it, it looks, it comes from the, the name crow's foot. Uh, you're looking at the, uh, the open end of the line wrench and without the shaft. So. At the end, if you're looking on page uh, 69 right there on figure 9-7, right at the base of where that opening end is of your line wrench, there's usually like a 
uh, three H drive uh, slot inside there. And those are, are really helpful and handy for difficult places to get to. So you need to try and see if you can get some of those. Uh, ratchets, of course, they come in quarter inch, three eighths, half inch. Those are the typical sizes. Um, looking at said six point, twelve point, and on page seventy on figure nine twelve, there's a, 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 a example there of a crow's foot, and that's actually a twelve point crow's foot. Uh, really, would like to recommend getting a six point versus a twelve point. Um, but uh, you know, those are used, of course, like I said, to break open lines that are in difficult spots. Uh, torque wrenches, torque wrenches, we use those every time uh, on every fastener on an engine and a uh, vehicle uh, that required a specific amount of torque. Of course, in the engine repair class, we use a torque wrench quite a bit. Uh, we could be quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch. But uh, every time we pull tires off, we need to make sure that we torque the lug nuts as well. Uh, that's key and critical. We never leave a, a tighten a lug nuts without torquing them because apparently what can happen is uh, a tire's gonna fall off when you're on the road. And I've seen it happen before. Um, so it's not a good feeling. The uh, <clears throat> couple other things to look at on that, uh, screwdrivers, you've got on page 72, you've got screwdrivers, uh, Phillips and, and uh, standard size flathead screwdrivers. You got offset screwdriver that can work out pretty good. The kind that I like is an impact screwdriver. Uh, sometimes we use those, especially on, like when you're doing brake jobs, you'll see a little Phillips head uh, that's holding the rotor in place. Uh, do not attempt to, to uh, take off that little screw. It's a little flange type screw. Uh, do not attempt to take that off uh, with a regular screwdriver because you will strip the head off. You need to have this specific tool right here to take it off. And what it does for you is when you hold it in there, uh, when you hammer it on, it's got a ratchet and clutch. So when you, when you hit it, it turns it. So you're able to loosen it up the rest of the way by hand because um, it's tapered, it's flanced. They call them almost like Tinnerman nuts, but uh, it's something similar to that. <clears throat> but uh, make sure you get one of those. They're pretty inexpensive. They come with a, a bit set as well. Um, so kind of look at that. Uh, hammers and pliers. Uh, you've got ball peen hammers. Uh, you've got mallets. You've got dead blow hammers uh, to use on there for different applications. Uh, just kind of be careful. Of course, you've got uh, uh, brass hammers that sometimes work out pretty good, especially when you're using punches and chisels. Um, you know, punches and chisels are, are another technician's really good friend, especially when you're dealing with uh, having to, to punch certain things or knock certain things off or roll pins or taking off bearings like on standard transmissions. Uh, those really come into play. Uh, pliers on page 74. Uh, you've got adjustable groove pliers that we looked at. They're called uh, jaw width adjustment type of pliers. Uh, I like to call them crescent you know, pliers or adjustable pliers. They work out pretty good. Um, you also have uh, cutting wires, uh, close terminals, which is very good that we use in the field, especially when we're dealing with cotter pins in the suspension area. Uh, use them before sometimes for cutting because they're very sharp for cutting wires. Uh, cutting some plastic material as needed. Um, so those are pretty good uh, type of pliers to use. That's on page 74 there. Uh, of course, uh, locking pliers or vice grips, uh, those, they come in different uh, sizes, uh, from a small size to a big size. Uh, you know, get a good set of those because that'll help you out. Needle nose pliers, you know, kind of get the 90 degree, the 45 degree angle ones. That kind of helps with certain situations. Uh, when you need those specifically around like compressors or bearings uh, which require a snap ring, uh, you want to try and get one of those. The snap ring pliers, they come in uh, inside and outside, internal and external type of snap rings. And some of them, they used to be sold as separate pliers, but now they make them adjustable where when you take the bolt off on the center, you can move them to uh, either them to be internal or external. So uh, that kind of works out pretty good when you get those. Uh, the punches and the chisels, again, kind of looking at page 76. Uh, if you look at that figure 935, it tells you where safety goggles. Uh, we want to inspect the mushroom head uh, or the, the punching uh, top of it, or, the, or punch or a chisel, because we can develop a mushroom uh, at the end of it. 
Uh, what we want to do is make sure we take it to a grinder and grind it off because if you leave that thing mushroomed out like you see on figure 9-36 and you stroke that thing with a hammer and it goes to the wrong, if you hit it at a wrong angle, uh, a little chip can come out and actually can hurt you. Uh, I've seen that happen before in a shop when a guy was doing that on uh, taking out a uh, synchronizer on a manual transmission and uh, it was mushroomed out and he didn't dress it up like they're supposed to. And when he hit it, it actually, a, a fragment came out and went right through his shirt. And it went, I mean, it got it into the inside his stomach, to be honest with you. So, uh, you know, I had to take him to a Texas Med Clinic. Of course, you have to have it removed. So uh, I had to get a tetanus shot on top of that. Uh, speaking of tetanus shots, you know, we, we should uh, make sure that we get a tetanus shot every 10 years. Uh, because if we don't, we can get some uh, uh, lead poisoning uh, we can also have a symptom called lockjaw, which is not good. Uh, and we can develop swelling and uh, get an infection, which I've seen that happen before with a buddy of mine who was doing construction work and he wound up stepping on a nail. Uh, and next thing you know, his, his foot started swelling up, his ankle started swelling up, and he still didn't do anything. And it went all the way to his knee and his knee started to balloon out. So uh, finally he did go in. Uh, because he couldn't take it anymore because of course it was painful and uh, wound up getting a whole bunch of shots. So uh, just kind of be careful with that. Uh, the other thing that we look at getting is bolt extractors uh, on figure 9-39. Uh, There's some bolt extractors there that we use to help remove bolts when they're stuck. Uh, the other thing that we look at as well, uh, and we talk about that more in the fasteners is a uh, uh, tap and die set, but we'll get into that in the discussion our Zoom meeting today. Uh, on basic hand tools, there's a set here on page 78. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get uh, you guys a copy of what our tool list is that we uh, give out to our students to kind of make you aware of what to try and start saving up and, and buying, uh, you know, for yourself. Because eventually when you get out of this, uh, the educational part, you're going to be working, want to work in a shop somewhere. Uh, and, and you have to have these basic tools with you. So uh, this one on page 70 has a pretty good uh, uh, tool list uh, to get started with. Uh, shows you a couple of sets uh, that you can get with this. Uh, typically you wanna have a good toolbox as well. Uh, make sure everything is organized. Uh, you know, sockets are organized and organizers. Uh, wrenches are organized. Uh, everything looks clean. Uh, you always wind up cleaning your tools safely because we never use uh, our tools when they're greasy because they can slip and we can hurt ourselves. So there's some safety issues regarding tools when you use them, guys. Uh, you spend a lot of money on tools, so it's best for you to go ahead and, and uh, keep them clean because there'll be some downtime that you'll have. Uh, make sure you have the, the, after every job, try and clean up your tools and put them away uh, in an organizational fashion so that way when you get ready to use it again, you know exactly where they're at and they're organized. Um, oh, that's one of my big pet peeves and a stickler. And when we do get a chance to go out to the lab, I will show you the toolbox, my toolboxes that I have over there in the room. And you'll see how those guys are, are organized. I keep them organized. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, of course, we've got electrical tools, uh, test lights. We have uh, soldering irons, soldering guns. Uh, that you'll be using, of course, multimeters. You know, we wanna take care of those as well uh, because we're gonna be using them anytime we're doing any electrical checks. Uh, so make sure we get that uh, tiered up in line. And also on page 81, uh, we always wear fender covers. Every time we work on a car, we need to have a fender cover over the fender of a vehicle. And primarily so that we don't scratch up the paint by accident because customers don't like that. Uh, they get very upset uh, when they see somebody working on a car and there's no fender covers. Uh, just kind of look at it like this. If you're working on your own vehicle uh, and you have a nice paint job on it, you're not gonna wanna scratch it up. So uh, just work on the customer's car as if you were working on your own vehicle. So um, I wanted to finish covering up this right here. I probably have a worksheet that I'll be sending out to you guys on this. Um, so we'll cover uh, uh, 10 and 12 was going to come up pretty quick on power tools and then also have a couple of demos out that uh, I'll have off to you on you guys. Uh, we're looking at probably uh, getting that guy going and then some micrometer usages 
Uh, we'll show you on that, get some, uh, maybe a couple of worksheets on you guys for to do some micrometers uh, awareness. And I'll do a couple of demos on that that I have. So uh, in the meantime, uh, you guys uh, be safe out there. You know, we have the numbers going up, so we'll kind of be safe. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care. Bye.